Oh, hi friends. Oh, it's fine. How are you this week? Where's my camera? I'm looking at the wrong direction. That's the camera. Hi friends. Um, I'm a little fl flustered because it's Friday and I totally forgot about doing a video. <laughs> I was in the middle of homework and I had this nagging feeling uh, that I forgot to do something. And all of a sudden my little alarm on my phone went off uh, to ask me if I had uploaded my video for this week. I was like, I did not. So it is actually Friday right now. And the second this video is done, I'm going to upload it. So it's even less edited than usual. Um, that's right. I know. I swear I don't edit, but you know, I edit like this much. Can you see that? It's like, see, it's like not much. Um, I had a friend ask me about why I don't learn how to put, um, like, this is a picture of this 18th century gown while I talk about it up on the screen. Uh, and, uh, this is a picture of this project and, and stuff up. And, uh, I thought about it and I'm going to learn how to do that, uh, when I want to show pictures of like my own projects. But, um, first of all, as we know, uh, adult students, I don't have a lot of time to do that kind of editing work and to research and find all that stuff. I'd rather be sewing. Okay. That's a lie. I'd rather be wearing something that's completely sewn and frolicking about in it. Uh, but I need to take the time to sew, um, when there is free time. Um, also, <coughs> I don't want to. And, uh, I thought of a good response to my friend. I said, Hey, you know, that really, really amazing version of Cinderella, uh, the movie called ever after with Drew Barrymore as Cinderella. Um, you know, the scene where she's in bed sick. Well, she's not really sick. She was just up super late with the prince and the gypsies. Uh, I apologize for that. Not politically correct term. Um, maybe it's Romani. I I'm not sure what the term is, but I swear they use the word gypsies in the movie. So I am quoting the movie when I say the word gypsies. Whew. Okay. Um, so her and the prince were up late with the gypsies canoodling and drinking, and she didn't get home till like dawn. So she is like exhausted and tired and probably a little hungover. And the stepmother comes upstairs and pushes the broom at her and goes, you know, are you ill? Why aren't you up making breakfast? And she's like, Oh, I'm so ill. And, uh, and, uh, the, the evil stepsister is like, who's going to make our breakfast? And Cinderella goes, you have two hands, make it yourself. That is my response. I assume that everyone here is just, super gifted and, and, and smart and fully able to Google an 18th century Mantua gown themselves. So go forth my friends and Google foo the things that I talk to you about. <sighs> Today's tea. I really wanted to use my amazing mug that my amazing follower Andrea sent to me um, that I showed y'all last week. Uh, that is the Catherine D. Medici Time Traveler Society Club. I add club on because I just feel more important thinking I'm in a club uh, mug, but it just went through the dishwasher and I tried to pull it out and it burnt my fingers a little and it's very hot. So this is another one of my favorite mugs. You will learn that I have very many favorite mugs. This is a cute little 
kind of purpley mug that I picked up at a Renaissance fair from, uh, oh, that's right, from a really great lady who I, it was many years ago, I don't know if she still, uh, still does the Ren Fair circuit, but if she does, she runs a booth called Get Stoned, um, <laughs> and, uh, anyway, she makes all sorts of wares and, and, and whatnot, and I love this little mug, and I am currently drinking vanilla honey bush tea, which is amazing sauce. Um, so my 1840s dress project is coming along really well. I actually have been fitting the bodice this week. I considered showing you on my dress form, but my dress form, which I'm staring at right now, is totally busted. It is, so it's one of those like sizing dress forms that you buy from the fabric stores, you know, just the, just the dress forms that like everyone and their dog has. And uh, it's not made for larger sizes. So it is like maxed out. I have got the hiccups, sorry. So it is maxed out and then uh, it has padding, which is like socks and plastic bags. And I don't know what all is around there actually. I think some hand towels maybe. And then uh, a corset around that to kind of hold all that stuff to it, uh, sized to my, my bust and, and waist size. Um, so it's actually really crap for draping, but I do it anyway, which may also be part of why things don't fit me very well. Huh. I should think about that and maybe look into other options at some point. Anyway, so I decided that uh, I'm going to be making the dress out of this beautiful green fabric. It is gorgeous and fantastic and has this pattern. Let me pull it apart. I don't know if you can see that, but it's got this pattern. I'm holding it up. I don't have light behind it. Oh, my window kind of gives a little light, but uh, it's see-through-ish. So I will have to line it and I've decided I'm going to line it in a bright white, which will kind of show through the little lacy sections, these little lacy panel -y sections. So it'll be a green and white dress. Um, I'm trying to decide on the piping. And if you have an opinion on the piping, please comment below because I would love to know your opinion because I am struggling. Um, I thought about just doing the piping in green, green dress. And then I thought about doing the piping in white as like a contrasting piping, but I almost wonder if that would be too bright. And then I thought, well, what if I did the piping in like uh, maybe a lighter green or I don't know. I don't know. What do you think guys? The piping for the dress. If you don't know what the piping is, uh, piping goes in the seam lines and it's when you take, um, like thick thread or eh, thick, like, um, yarn, like thick yarn, I think. Okay. I never actually made piping. I have some piping, like already pre-made piping, but I've never actually made piping. I think it's around yarn. I'm looking into that. Um, anyway, and you wrap the fabric over it and then you sew it into a strip so that you have this kind of little rolled, uh, ball, uh, rolled Google piping. Oh wait, Google piping and sewing or piping and dresses or piping on 1840s dresses. Uh, it was especially popular in the 1830s and 1840s where all of the seams, the shoulder seams, any seams along the bust, the waist, all these seams had this piping, which kind of, uh, it kind of outlines the dress and, 
uh, kind of frames the dress for you. It's, it's very pretty. It's very, very pretty. And, um, I've never done it before. So this will be an adventure for me. I will bring you along on that adventure. I promise. Um, I'm going to try and start including more pictures, updates of when I'm sewing, because honestly, I don't want to just do another, this is me sewing video because there's 50,000, you watch, you'll watch 50,000 people sewing online guys. So, but I think I'm going to take some pictures along the way of, Hey, this is how I learned piping, or maybe even a few little short videos, like 10 seconds long, like I learned to do a thing or I did not learn to do a thing, obviously. Um, so pay attention to my Instagram cause I'm going to be better at that and do that better. Um, I promise I have more of this fabric. This is only about a yard and a half after pulling, uh, or after cutting out the panels for the skirt, this is almost, this, this is all I have left for the bodice and the sleeves. So well, I can do it. It'll be great. It'll be fine. It'll work out. It'll be just fine. Right. I won't run out of fabric. Right. Right. It'll be fine. Um, pin cushions. I was going to talk to you about pin cushions. So while I was digging through the mess that is my sewing room, um, I found this pin cushion. So, uh, I have a grandmother, I have two grandmothers, um, and I love both of them uh, wonderfully, but one of them, my grandma Renee, who passed away several years ago, was my, was more than a grandmother to me. She was my favorite person in the whole world. And if I start crying, just ignore the crying people, you know, that's what I do. Anyway, um, I've always been kind of the odd man out in my family. I come from a very conservative family, very, um, I don't, I don't know. I'm trying to think of any, any terms I think of to use for my family sound negative and they're not negative. They're not at all. But how about I reverse this? My family, my, especially my mom has always uh, used these words to describe me to everyone else. Oh, Emily is the creative one. Emily's the fun one. Emily's the loud one. Emily's the colorful one. Um, yeah, uh, I just kind of burst into bright, magical loudness in my family. And, uh, I, and because all three kids, me and my two brothers are adopted. Um, I don't, I didn't look like anyone and I didn't act like anyone. And it was hard sometimes. It was hard feel like no one understands you, but my dad's mom, my grandma Renee, that's where I came from. <laughs> I know, I know it's adopted, but you guys, I'm going to share this on Instagram. I think I maybe already have, but if you compare pictures of us when we're the same ages, we look so much alike. She used to keep a picture of her in her twenties and a picture of my high school graduation, uh, photo next to each other on her in, in her entryway. And people thought they were both me. Like I look like her. Thank heavens. She's beautiful. So I need to remember that I must be beautiful because I look like her. Um, anyway, she was bright and funny and kooky and just, just amazing. And she had all the feelings. And her husband and children were very well, like my family is. So she was the bright tropical bird in her, in her, in her family. Uh, and we, we were the best of friends. Anyway, I, when she passed away, I inherited a bunch of her stuff. My mom was so sweet to, um, grab a bunch of stuff when, when all the children were clearing out her house, uh, for me to keep, um, 
and those memories are really precious. I have a lot of, I have a lot of things of hers that, I mean, that if my house is ever on fire, I told my husband, I'm going to have to like write up a plan of like where to run and grab all of my grandma's stuff. Cause that's what matters to me in this. Everything else can burn, but I want my grandma's stuff. Anyway, I found this pin cushion and it is the most adorable thing. I don't know if you can see this, but she made it and she made it out of, so this is, uh, you know, uh, those jars for canning, those like glass jars that, and then they have the lids that you put like the, the metal piece on and then the lid that screws on when you're canning like vegetables or sauce. I don't can. Anyway, it's a canning jar lid and she's put like, I think it's the metal bottom and then she's covered it in, she's covered it in velvet and then she's put a, ri a ribbon around the edge here and then there's like rice inside here and then this is covered in velvet and then there's a little piece of, of lace along here and it's for your pins and it is just the most precious, most awesomest little thing ever and I just love it and I usually use my little wrist one but ever since uh, I came across this, I love it so much. And it was already full of all of these like beautiful pearl headed, lovely, delicate pins that I can't wait to use. So um, I wanted to share that little treasure with you guys because it's really special to me. And um, I also think it's super cool and um I don't know. I almost want to like try to make my own. I mean, nothing would replace this. I love this. I want to use it forever. Um, but I kind of, now I'm, uh, I got a snotty nose and I don't want to all over my fingers. Um, um, plug your ears, plug your ears. Everyone ready, ready, plug your ears. Three, two, one. Okay. Are we good? Okay. I told you I'm not going to edit this. Anyway, I think this would be a really fun activity to make your own little cute pin cushion. Like it's so fun and you can like, you can feel the rice in there and the pins just come out and in so easily. And it's really fun. And the velvet on the bottom, I was kind of wondering about it when I first saw this, I was like, why is there this velvet on the bottom? And then I realized it grips. If there's like, it grips to your table and like this table has a tablecloth. I put this down. If I push this, it has got a lot of friction. I just realized that like my camera zoomed in. So now you can't see the top of my head and you can't, why does it do this? Guys, it does it all on its own. I, I have no pushy things, nothing. It just suddenly zooms in. It's the weirdest thing. Hmm. Phone. What is wrong with you? Okay. Anyway. Really cool. Um, if you want any pictures or anything, I could post some maybe on Instagram if you're interested in doing your own little project because I tell you what, it's super cool. And this would be like a really great mother daughter activity maybe to make your own cute little pin cushions. You could do different colors. So you each have your own, just an idea, just saying. Okay. There has been a project I've been putting off for the past couple of years. Um, I was supposed to do it 2020, but COVID, right? So, um, and I, I've, I've been wanting to do it for a couple of years. I said that, um, and a bunch of great costumers that I admire so much have been making this, ha have made some of these. And, uh, I think they're just gorgeous. Um, during the 18th century, there were these, well, the kind of the latter half, later half of the 18th century, um, there were these gowns called pastorals, um, and they were 
fluffy chemises with with vibrant bodices and skirts and little little aprons. They were often associated with the ballet. Yes, there was ballet in the 18th century. Um, and, uh, and oftentimes, uh, shepherdesses were, are depicted in art in these pastoral gowns. So if you, um, if you Google who, uh, 18th century pastoral gowns, you will find a plethora. So I have this Barbie doll that I have had for a couple years and I'm also looking up at you and like I'm bending down because the camera zoomed in, but also because I think it actually, actually maybe fell or tipped a little bit. So you're up, you're like, it, it, I will figure it out. I promise. Anyway. Uh, so I got the fair Valentine Barbie. I've had this for many years and, um, I want to make a pastoral gown based on her. She is in this beautiful pink and teal, let's get this shine off her outfit. And she is based on this. I don't know if you can see in the bottom part on this beautiful painting that I will put on my Instagram, uh, this week, this beautiful painting, uh, pastoral painting. Um, and I have been wanting to recreate this dress for years and I actually have all the fabric for it. I just have not gotten around to it. So that is on the project list for this spring as well. Um, I need to get some things done for the Victorian festival coming up in April. So, uh, depending on when those get done, which will probably be right up till the night of and possibly during the Victorian festival. Uh, this might end up being a May project, but I'm hoping I can get to it sooner than that. Um, something really funny though, for you historical costumers is inside here. It says dressed in lovely 1830s daytime attire. Yes. Apparently, um, they did not do any historical research and said, Hmm, let's pick a time period. That sounds good. Oh, how about the 1830s? So they're like 60, 70, possibly 80 years ahead of time. I don't remember when this painting was painted. Um, I will find out for you and I will post that on my Instagram this weekend. Um, but this stunning Barbie will be recreated, um, this spring. And I will go frolic in the flowers. Um, I know that some of my friends have done pastoral gowns too. So I'm hoping I can convince them to frolic with me. As always, I appreciate you listening to my ramblings. And I love all of you. And I think that uh, you are the nicest and sweetest of friends to listen to my not a sewing video and, um, follow along in my sucky sewing journeys. So have a fantastic week and I'll see you next Friday. Okay. I've got to blow my nose. No. <laughs>